Take a look at this blight on Seattle. It's a big, uh, you know, garbage dump. Hopefully for the final time. And uh, it needs to be cleaned up. Starting Monday, crews will start removing all the burned out cars, mounds of trash and dangerous debris at the massive First Avenue Bridge homeless encampment. I'm hoping that they actually do something to resolve it. It's expected to take several days to clear thousands of pounds of garbage and twisted metal from several parcels of land owned by the city and the Washington State Department of Transportation. The environmental impact, what they're doing to the Duwamish River by tearing apart these cars right next to the river, all the trash going in there. For the past few years, frustrated neighbors begged the city and state to figure out a solution after multiple shootings, fights, drug overdoses, and at least one homicide. Two people shot. Authorities say criminals also used it as a chop shop and dumping ground for stolen cars. They know it's a problem now and it turned into a revolving door for the homeless. Uh, so what's the plan on Monday when the city and state move in? Um, just watch them destroy our lives, man, the little bit of lives that we had going on, you know? Edgar Busio says he's frustrated, but he's heading into temporary housing. I'm just grateful that I'm getting out of here, man, you know what I mean? It's been, it's been long, for rough four years. At this point, there are fewer than 10 people left at this encampment. You know, we've known for a long time, and I've just been kind of, I've had a lot of anxiety and panic about it. Imra Van Wolvler lives in this RV with his wife and says they've rejected housing and would prefer to stay. We're comfortable here, even though it's... Uh, probably one of the worst neighborhoods in Seattle. It's still, it's what we call home. It's a uh, of chicken. This weekend, volunteers with several faith-based groups. Wow. And so we're trying to reach them, bring the gospel. Offered meals and clothing. We're here to share the love of Christ to people and give them hope. Along with encouragement. We're doing our best, uh, you know, to, uh, to bring the light, to help break them free of their bondages. But Kevin McDonald admits they're also struggling to break through because of this. That it seems to be about a 90% drug problem and a 10% homeless problem. The drugs like fentanyl are ravaging this community and enslaving them to the streets. They just can't, can't go back home, they can't go live with family, they can't go live with friends because the drugs always get in the way. Well, I'm glad they're finally getting it cleaned up. One of the lone bright spots, this man who goes by Weaver. I interviewed him last year after his RV burned down, but he says that incident also forced him to take the next step in his journey. Weaver's now living in an apartment and believes others here can do the same. Yeah, it is about time. I think I think this place has had it, you know. It's, it's really kind of gone downhill for the last few years. Mm -hmm.